this may be a shock to you, but Lightyear is in fact a spin-off of the Toy Story property featuring Buzz Lightyear as the lead character. Yeah, I know. <laughs> you heard it here first. Now the big question is, does the Space Ranger get a worthy first outing? Or is this character better served being shoved back in the toy box? Let's find out in this review. To mediocrity and beyond. If you haven't subscribed to the channel by some of the knowledge I dropped on you in this intro, you're definitely going to want to do that now because I'm going to hit you with another one. Did you know Tim Allen originally voiced the character in the first four Toy Story movies and some of the shorts you can find on Disney Plus? I know. I know. Subscribe already. Uh, here he's voiced by Chris Evans. Why? I truly don't know. I guess they wanted someone a little bit more youthful. It does beg the question, why does the official toy Andy plays with not have the voice of the actor from the film? Even my son's crappy Iron Man toy has Robert Downey's voice going, I'm Iron Man. That thing doesn't even bend its knees. You're telling me a top of the line action figure with tons of bells and whistles, retractable wings and whatnot, can't afford to pay Chris Evans to throw a couple lines in the toy? Come on. Chris Evans does a fine job voicing the character. At points, it almost sounds like Tim Allen's doing it, but he's not. I can assure you he's not. But I like to think of myself as a positive individual, so let's get some of those out of the way first. Number one, beautiful looking movie. Visuals, top of the line, of course. The detail, the animation, blah, blah, blah. It's Pixar. This is such a waste of breath for me. I, I mean, there's nothing bad to say about the visuals, although I still have some but we'll get to those in a little bit. And the same can be said for the audio. Lots of throwback sound effects you're gonna hear to things like Simon Says and other stuff that I can't remember. Well, why 90 sounds? Well, that's when this fictitious movie takes place, inside the fictitious Toy Story world where Andy went to see a movie that would inspire him to buy the toy. Now, Andy's not in the film. I guess that's a spoiler of something that's not here. Uh, you can wait as long as you want to the end credits or later. He's not showing up. Okay, if you were looking forward to the Pixar heart tugging moment where he and his dad go to this movie together and bond and it would have been brilliant because it came out on Father's Day weekend. Uh, yeah, that doesn't happen. There's pretty much no heart tugging emotion to be found at all. That's as much of a spoiler as I'm going to give. There are things that could be revealed that I won't, but I don't even care enough to talk about it. This is one of the worst Pixar movies for me to date. Okay, and I don't mean to date like go on a date with it. I mean to hyphen date. And it's mainly because it's so uninspired and dull across the board. It cherry picks concepts and ideas you've seen countless times. At some points that comes off as an homage and at others it's just a straight up rip off of a film like Interstellar, which is far better. At one hour and 40 minutes, the movie's too long. I could have sworn it was two hours and that's not good. That, that's not good when a movie drags that much. The middle portion of this film is such a slog. The film is actually very enjoyable for the first half hour. It's when the ragtag crew gets introduced that I just don't care anymore. I'm so sick and tired of the trope where we need to have a klutzy, shaggy type character. It works in a comedic show like Scooby-Doo or Chippendale Rescue Rangers because it's light, it's fun. You expect characters to make mistakes and for a, a zany sound effect to take place. But when you're dealing with something more serious, having a character that's just aloof and downright stupid is not fun to watch. It's frustrating. And there is a character like that in this. In fact, there's a whole team of them. As these dipshits continued to screw things up for Buzz Lightyear, I just kept thinking, wow, it's no wonder Andy never bought these toys. It's no wonder they weren't flying off the shelves. In fact, it's... It's little wonder why they didn't even show up at all in the originals. Almost like they didn't exist when those came out. I won't outright say this is a bad film, but it's one that I definitely don't want to watch again. I don't like cars, and I prefer to see that over this. That's, that's where I sit. This is above The Good Dinosaur, but not much in my book. And, and that's like bottom tier Pixar for me. I know some people like that film. Okay, fine. Whatever. If you want to take your kid to this film, there's really nothing scary. There's just kind of nothing here at all. There's a cute robotic cat that steals the show. Anytime a movie's really mediocre, it's always the cute animal that steals the show, isn't it? Captain Marvel? Now, there are going to be some concerned parents out there that are offended that there is a scene featuring two women kissing. It lasts for like half a second. It's basically a peck. 
Uh, that'll be enough though. And consider this your warning. They do acknowledge that they're gay. They have a child. That's that's kind of it. I feel like it's Disney checking a box. They're like, oh, we got, a, we got a gay character in a Pixar movie. We can move on now and pat ourselves on the back. And the film isn't any better for it. It's just kind of useless. I personally couldn't care less. What insults me in movies is when it feels like pandering or when it feels absolutely out of place. And here's where I'm gonna nitpick a little bit. And, but it, there is a point to it. Okay, the movie came out in 95 inside of this animated Pixar film, right? Andy goes to see this when he's much younger. Uh, a, movies that came out in 1995 were far different. They absolutely did not have two gay people kissing, okay? That just didn't happen. Now I understand this is a fictitious world where toys can talk and come to life. So maybe in that world things are more inclusive and that's fine. Um, but I didn't see that character flying off the shelves in the Toy Story films. I didn't see a single kid picking out that black, strong, female lead gay character from the toy aisle. It, it didn't exist. B, and this is a hang-up I had with Toy Story 2, which I love. Andy's watching a movie that came out in 1995 that has far better special effects and technology than was comprehensible then. In Toy Story 2, there's a video game at the beginning where Buzz Lightyear's fighting a bunch of aliens on the moon. The graphics of the video game look exactly like the graphics in the movie. So the video game the toys are playing at the time has visuals so advanced, it mimics the real world the toys are living in. That's preposterous. Had Pixar really wanted to take a chance with this film, they would have made the animation style akin to something in 1995. Yes, there are robots and some of the tech that's very old school. They're trying to give it a bit of a Star Wars vibe to it. But I was hoping there would be animation that was a little bit more herky-jerky. Like maybe the aliens look like they're created with stop motion. Maybe some of the movie sets are really fake, done with CG of course, but they can, they can do that. That would have been hilarious and a brilliant kind of like meta commentary of how much things have advanced. Like, look, we made a movie inside of a movie, but also within that movie, the effects are dated like movies that it's representing. I mean, man, wow, what a, it's, it's like up its own ass in meta and I would have absolutely ate that up. But this film doesn't have anything important or profound to say. It's just coasting on mediocrity through and through. I think I touched upon the end credits in this film and I wanna let you know there are three of them, kind of. They all suck. They're absolutely not worth sticking around for. One uh, takes place a little bit towards the middle of the end credits and then the final two are at the very, very end. I'm talking Pixar logo comes up again and then the shot takes place. It, it's, it's so not worth your time. And that's exactly what Lightyear is, not worth your time until it eventually shows up on Disney Plus and you have nothing better to do or you wanna keep your bratty kids entertained for an hour and 40 minutes, throw this on. All right, those are my thoughts on Lightyear. Let me know if you saw it and what you thought in the comments below. And please think about subscribing if you haven't as I post tons of movie and TV show related content here each and every week. And I'd appreciate having you stick around. Now, if you excuse me, I have to saddle up on my horse and ride like the wind, bullseye! I can't wait for the Woody Roundup TV show on Disney Plus that will inevitably happen. <laughs> We're just creatively bankrupt all around, aren't we? See you later. Oh my gosh, wow, you still stuck around. Thank you for making it all the way to the end of the video. Since you seem to kind of like what I'm doing, maybe, possibly, you could maybe also think about becoming a Patreon at patreon.com slash adamdoesmovies. Or you can join right here and become a YouTube member via that YouTube join button. You don't just get the privilege and honor of helping a YouTube creator grow as an individual by becoming a member, but you also get access to exclusive videos. Some of them are uh, borderline amazing, uh, according to my mother, who doesn't actually watch them, but she's very supportive. Although she's not a Patreon. Probably should call her about that, see what's going on. She can afford it.